Okay, this, this is the, the last session. Uh, I am the, the MC that eventually will give you the due right to leave and go to the beach, <laughs> okay? <laughs> but not before uh, we give some chance of uh, opportunity uh, to the speakers of the afternoon, or the last ones, uh, to answer, answer to a few questions that I'm sure the audience will uh, address to them. Okay, that's Pierre, Olivier, no time. Um, but before that, then I, I have the uh, very heavy challenge of uh, making sense of uh, two days, uh, very intense and actually incredibly stimulating. And to introduce you to uh, Claudine Dussolier, a neighbor uh, coming from Zang, that is La Friche, uh, in charge at La Friche of uh, international exchanges in between the two shores of uh, the, the sea, and uh, I would say between art and uh, digital art, but you can say more. Yes, it's that. Nowadays I'm doing that in uh, digital arts uh, development with a network of artists and uh, cultural places around the Mediterranean and sea, more or less. So I will explain. So we should start with the, the question of uh, Pierre. Um, it's a question maybe because uh, Roger uh, mentions, uh, mentioned uh, ethics and so I have uh, <laughs> a duty to, to, to answer something. Uh, maybe uh, we are in a new situation about ethics uh, as well. Uh, because uh, you see, uh, Roger uh, has um, mentioned the, the current of uh, remote sensing. And the idea is that uh, what we, for example, uh, take uh, seeing. Seeing is focalizing on some aspects of the reality and let uh, aside the other aspects. And in, uh, so when we add new ways of uh, uh, sensitivity, uh, then you make us uh, less blind to other aspects of reality. But it is impossible to be sensitive to all aspects of reality. It has no, uh, no sense. So uh, we have uh, to uh, take different aspects of reality, not in isolation, but in interaction. And you see, uh, uh, in the traditional way to see ethical values, we see one value like uh, truth, uh, to be, uh, to tell the truth, or uh, to, to be uh, kind and so, something like that, or uh, justice, and so on and so on, and not the network of values. And you have seen the uh, network of uh, science about water, the slide uh, that Roger has uh, shown, and uh, we have to do the same job for e ethics. And it uh, implies that ethics are, is uh, not uh, thought of as uh, the, to, to, to stick to traditional value, but also to have research about ethical values. And so there is a link between ethics and science, of course, because it is research, and there is a link between science and art, because art and science have different kind of research. Science have a met method of research. It is a strict method with rules, and we have to, uh, uh, to respect the, the methods in order to be published, for example. But, of course, art uh, is research without this kind of strict and uh, uh, constraining methods, but with methods and with tools. And so the relation between science and arts is 
that science can use tools uh, from sciences, uh, that arts can use. So you see that we have three kinds of research, uh, research in science, research in art, and research in ethics, and they cannot uh, be thought of in isolation. You cannot uh, uh, disconnect the kind of research in sciences, the kind of research in arts, and the kind of research in e ethics. Okay, thank you for the point of view. Um, would you go to, to say that we need to inquire in a new kind of cloud, the cloud of values? The cloud of uh, uh, the, the question was uh, addressed to Roger. You want you have to answer. Yeah, I, th I, th I, th I like your idea that we think we need to think about a, a, a network of values, and that depending where you are in the network of knowledge, different values are more important uh, in, in different situations. Um, s scientists in general do not like to talk about values. Um, I, I was just in Texas, um, and they have a center for values in science and medicine. And I said, why, why isn't it ethics? And they said, oh, we don't have ethics in Texas. We have values. <laughs> and I said, oh, OK. <laughs> and so indeed, the, the, the way that you connect um, what's valuable together, values, <laughs> uh, depends where you are in that network that I, that I showed, right? And so in some places, if you're doing experimental water studies, clearly the scientific method is a very strong value system. <laughs> but as soon as you go somewhere else in that network, then there's a, a shift um, in, in the relative weight of different values. So I, I haven't thought it, about it very much uh, more than that. Uh, OK, An another questions for the two? Um, my my uh, question uh, or comment uh, has to do with the arts and sciences. Um, and there is uh, something I tried to include in my presentation, which were uh, screen captures of posters of movies uh, from the entertainment industry. Uh, uh, it's a big industry. It really shapes the perceptions of science of the majority of the population. Uh, the National Science Foundation uh, in the United States is trying uh, to have the uh, 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 Science Entertainment Exchange, which is an effort to uh, make sure that the scientific uh, plots or the, the contents of the big blockbuster movies is not completely pseudo-scientific. Uh, and uh, I think probably there are a number of things that can be done along those lines. Uh, and uh, to really bring in uh, the entertainment industry, the powerful entertainment industry. Jim? I just want to uh, disagree with that comment because uh, I was involved in a movie called The Core, and it's a movie about, you know, uh, a science fiction movie essentially. And I was a scientific advisor for that movie. And um, during that time, I met this actor called Del Rey Lindo. Somebody you may, you may know, he's a black actor. And uh, he's a very nice man. But in terms of his knowledge of science, he was born in London. He had no education. He, uh, so I showed him this thing. It was the periodic table. And he said, the movie contains this element, unobtainium. And I said, oh. He says, it's a fictional element. And I said, no, no, it's on the periodic tables. You see this element, you? And it was uranium, you know, just as a joke. And he said, what is this table? And I said, it's a map of the elements of the universe. And uh, he said, could I have one? So I gave him one. And, you know, I, I, I'm not so sure that bringing the entertainment industry into I, I, maybe 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 the some way, but this my experience personally was kind of disastrous. And Victoria could probably say something because they also wanted the uh, in Holly, you know, through the Hollywood industry to bring it into the CNSI. But anyway, that's my comment. Um, Roger, I, 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 um. 
I have a question for Victoria, actually, which, um, which is the, the, the place of eccentric ideas um, in, in research. Um, uh, and as you know, there's a book that came out uh, last year called, called How the Hippies Save Physics. Uh, because in California, in the social networks, the, there was, you know, between quantum mechanics and Californian Buddhism, and the, yeah, there, there was a very interesting cloud of, of interactions. Um, one of the things that I occasionally run into in, in the art science discussion is some scientists get very uncomfortable when the artist um, distorts uh, in some way, what the sinus feels is the scientific truth. Uh, and I, I just wonder how, in your interactions, not necessarily with Jim, but, but the role of eccentric ideas or off-center ideas would be maybe uh, uh, the question. And I, you, were, you were a little bit provocative this afternoon. <laughs> well, it was the end of the session. I had to keep people awake. Um, I think it's eccentric attracts eccentric, and to, in other words, uh, scientists that I work with, Jim is one, he's definitely eccentric. Um, what does eccentric mean? It means it's off-center, right? So the center would be the regular path, and it's somebody who's willing to take risks, right? So to, to kind of assume that artists are by default eccentric is so wrong. I have found many artists to be really traditionalist and really close-minded and you know just moving towards a gallery and thinking in ways that absolutely is not inspiring in many ways. But it really is about relationship that builds to the point where it's a dialogue. And whether it's Jim or Mark Cohen or other people who I work with, it's about developing a relationship and a dialogue to the point where a really wild idea that's pursued becomes interesting to both. And then it gets to the point where even if the artist, want, myself, wants to take it to a place where it's kind of wild and crazy, because it's based in dialogue, it do, it, there's a delicate point where you just know where not to cross over. And it doesn't mean compromise at all. It really just means that you have, you're balancing the, the dialogue and respecting the place where you just don't go. So in my case with Jim, and he'll tell you, there's a point where he just doesn't go because I'm doing the installation, we're setting it up, and he just kind of defers because he got to the point where he kind of understands how much goes into setting something up. And there's a point where I just know I can't, I don't have the knowledge. This is way too deep for me to just throw words out and pretend I know. So I defer to him. So it's really about that kind of respect and dialogue, and it's true for everything, by the way. I don't think it's just art and science. I think it's any relationship, if you want it to continue. You're constantly negotiating in some ways and feeling what works and what doesn't. And just to end, I think artists are able to put out some ideas that would be really dangerous for a scientist to say publicly. We, we can get away with it. And that's an important role to play. Thanks, thanks for your, your answer because I think it allows uh, us to go back to and to circle around very nice moments of these two days. The, this moment that um, uh, Anna called uh, wild moments <laughs> and uh, you guys magic or something like that. Okay, And it's really about uh, uh, what you describe is it's a transfer of uh, inspiration actually and uh, new ideas that are triggered by, uh, by, 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 by the, the encounter okay and you never cannot predict them in advance and it's too bad that Pierre uh, left because uh, yes it's one thing to say uh, the three kind of research had has to be uh, have to be interconnected but it has started 
Okay, and we have plenty of examples where not only it was interconnected, but it has, they were inter, I would say, affected by, and we need to have a more precise and subtle sense of what's going on during this uh, very creative period, okay? But I think we will go back to that. Go back to Claudine, uh, this kind of uh, fecundity and, and creativity in different artists or different kind of uh, profiles, I would say, or different origins. I mean, what does it tell you? I mean, you have something to say about your experience and the artists you are taking care of? Yes, um, maybe I can speak about some experience from uh, artist uh, Egyptian one who try to to push the border of the question of uh, scientific research because they need that to resolve pro artistic problem. So this could um, is very often the the reason for artists to come and to go uh, forward the uh, scientists and to try to find them. But uh, in Egypt, for example, it's something difficult to connect the field of uh, researchers and scientific uh, department and so on in university and the place where artists try to uh, create. This is one of the problems. But of course, each time it's possible to make connection. It's very fruitful. And uh, here in Imera, we have the example with some artists uh, as well, so we could go further in this. Uh. Boris, not man. I'd like to make a comment, uh, which is maybe um, a link with what you say, but uh, it's a comment uh, on Roger's uh, talk. Uh, and it's also a reference to Buckminster Fuller, which was uh, largely said today. Uh, Fuller said, uh, his analysis of uh, university says, uh, that university universities appeared um, when the great merchant like uh, Christophe Colomb, uh, uh, but the the one before them, uh, had the need to uh, get knowledges and uh, separate the knowledge fields. Uh, so that to keep the power, get the knowledge to uh, build ships and drive the ships and, and understand uh, uh, how to keep the ship in the right direction uh, with very bad maps and uh, get money just by uh, bringing a merchandise from a part of the world to another part of the world and like this triangle of uh, savage, but then, so get the knowledge, but separate the people that bring the knowledge, so that only one, the merchant, the great merchant, has uh, all the knowledge in his hands, and only in his hand. So uh, then appear the different fields, like uh, astronomy, physics, uh, geometry, uh, and they are separate. Um, now, who has the power? Uh, not the merchant anymore. The power is in the people that make the crisis. Uh, the crisis is a way to say, well, there is an emergency, there is the crisis, we have to do that. So that's the power that drives us now. And, um, there is no need anymore of uh, this kind of knowledge that were needed to build ships. 
or maybe yes, we need the knowledge of um, what rules the economics, uh, but uh, is, is this a science? That's another question. So now we are facing the, the, the crisis of university and the crisis of this kind of knowledge. And so that's, that's uh, I'm, I'm not going further. Uh, <laughs> I leave you here. <laughs> I'd like to hear how it sounds here. So, <coughs> what you say, you know, is, uh, is a kind of worldview in which you as a human and you believe humans have a control over a system. But the way the world, in my opinion, emerged, you know, and, and I'm interested to hear other people's opinion, right, is that it basically evolved, evolved as a system of communication. Um, our and science, they separated because of necessities, because of evolutionary uh, driving forces. Uh, the state of the world at the moment, with the 90% or whatever, you know, 10% evolved just as a consequence of an interconnected system. And if you look back, you know, I was just in Glasgow the other week, you look at the society and you look at this marvelous architecture they had, it was like the 99.9% you know, and the 0.1% had it. Um, in a way, to actually, um, you know, and I'm interested in people's opinion because it's just my opinion, but it's, it's just an evolving system that, that the human has no control over. And the human had no real control over these systems probably since you know, humanity started, but they, they, they make a nice story about, you know, the war started, this started, it was this guy, it was that guy. It, I, I, in my opinion, it wasn't. It was just, it's just a naturally evolving system. And so if we, if we adopt an attitude uh, um, to view it that way, then maybe we have, you know, some some hope. But I know, you know, maybe Samuel can comment because it's, you know, it's also to do with sociology, the how the society develops. But I, I don't think uh, we have any control over it. Uh, other questions, other comments? Because I, then I, uh, am. No, I think it's no, I, I, I would like to disagree with you <laughs> because I think we are not separate from the system. We are part of the system. So just as much as system evolves, we also evolve. It's kind of like from uh, biology, and I'm not a biologist, but you know, it, it's it, to, to my knowledge, there's a lot of research on the cells and the environment and how the environment influences the behavior of the cell and the other way around. So it's basically like this breathable wall and it's not that, oh, as humans, we have no control and the system just evolving on its own. And it's not just, just we human evolve on our own and, you know, and it doesn't matter uh, the, the basically we have no um, effect on the system. It, it is a really uh, very mutual, you know, we, we are part of the system. So if the system evolves, we are evolving. And if the system is changing, we are changing. And we are changing the system and, and it goes on. <laughs> well, I think that if uh if the situation were really out of control, it would be much better than uh, what is occurring at the moment. I think that the control is in the hands of the, the very few, a group of pirates, as Buckminster Fuller called them. And um, I think that uh, get, getting the power out of their hands has been a uh, quite an entangled uh, adventure, but uh, I, I'm, I'm the first to believe that uh, science is one of the ways to, to get the power out of the hands of the pirates, simply because they cannot grasp uh, it all. 
or even a small portion thereof. Um, I think that, um, I mean, uh, it's already 5.10. Uh, the situation for me is very uncomfortable because I hate to have the last word. <laughs> and I'm about to get that. Uh, but I, I would like to, to go back to some moment for me that were very, very, and President Obama would say, defining moments, okay? <laughs> and one thing I loved is, and I'm sorry, okay, is uh, that uh, you described that um, uh, it was in the process of the interaction with an engineer that you discovered the meaning of what you were doing or what you were at, okay? And I think something might be close to that in your experiment. So this for me is just great because uh, uh, we have to, to, to never forget that it's a matter of process. And uh, yesterday when Emmanuel, it was, it was bright, okay? He was, 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 did his job. Uh, but I was slightly offended actually because uh, you can give a shit about the artist, except that he would go to museum, but it's okay. Uh, so he's a scientist. But he was kind of supposing that we were here waiting for a doxa to be ours, whereas it's not, not our problem. We are working, we are at work, we are interested by what the neighbors, uh, be they artists or, or scientists, are doing. And sometimes it makes for beautiful things and we are happy enough, okay? So that's my, my, my first point. And my, another point, if, if I have to, to have these last words, uh, never forget what, that we are speakers. We speak, though we are artists or scientists, we speak. And we are into different kind of uh, specialty and discipline, but to into, into a different kind of language. And it was somebody alluded to that today. Uh, and so I would like to drop from my sponge-like head after two days of uh, swallowing a lot of things, two French words uh, at the roadblock for the future. Uh, the first one is uh, sillage. And the second one is parage. So let me explain. Parage. Because parage. Okay. So sillage is because of my discovery of the English word of wake. And it was a question of physics of wakes yesterday. And for a French kid, wake, yeah. Uh, for French kids, uh, in high school, wake is, wake up, awakening. But no, the, the sense of uh, the wake, the trail of the sillage uh, is lost. And so I have no uh, Javiera work. I mean, she's interested in the, in the, in the, in the, in the wave, in the, the crush of the wave and things like that. But she's much more interested in the retro movement of it and all these ripples that are in the wake of the wave, okay? That's the first point. So I would like that some ripples shivers us a little bit in the time to, to, to come and the sooner the better. So we should make some appointment uh, for that, okay? I don't know in what way. And so, you know, this word of sillage is caught in between French and English, and the, the French hearing of English, actually. And then there are these other words, which is parage. A parage, when you try, you, you search in English dictionary, I mean, you guys, and, and, and you speaking guys, are kind of weird because you, you, you find about, roundabout, things like that, okay? Uh, uh, but parage comes from uh, uh, a Spanish word, parar, is to, to, to be stationary, to, 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 to 
to, to be uh, to stay somewhere, but it is used only in watery kind of surroundings. Both are in the page page of each other. Okay, so I like this word because it. If, if he indicates or he, I, he steers toward, to, towards this sense of uh, ended, uh, watery kind of uh, surrounding, and, uh, and it, it, it steers toward us as navigators, okay? And I think it defines pretty much our mutual respective condition, and I, I want to say that. Uh, uh, voilà. It's uh, talking of water, okay? I did my best. <laughs> <laughs> so I have, the, I have the last word, or somebody wants yeah, to? Make sure I have the last word. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, Do you want me to end by some logistic <laughs> issues? Uh, well, I'm very happy of those two days and what has been uh, said and uh, discussed. And I guess there, there was more room for at least one more day. And to end up with a joke, I've learned something really, really important. Do not organize a workshop at the end of June in Marseille. <laughs> or just include in the afternoon we go to the seaside. So this is uh, talking about water. I think this was an important uh, uh, learning process. Um, thank you to, more seriously, thank you really. I will be in touch with uh, everyone, with the presenters about what I'm going to ask you uh, in the coming uh, days and weeks. And for the, the audience, we have your uh, email address. So we'll be very happy to keep you posted of the outcomes and what we'll do next. Thanks a lot. I have a comment. Um, I just began a discussion with Jean-Marc Schumer's uh, in one of the coffee breaks. Um, it, it seems to me in the coming years we, we need to work at, at, at several levels. Uh, one, one of the levels is clearly to, to create the situations where these collaborations can happen, right? So that, that's one level of sort of uh, creating the, the safe places where risks can be taken. Um, but I, I think also we, 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 we need to do sort of work at the other, and maybe levels is not the, work, the right word, but other networks of how we organize ourselves. Uh, there are a number of activities of groups like this one working on the art science problem. One of the areas which I think we, should, we have some difficult work to do is on um, the, I'm going to use the word teaching, but it's not necessarily the, the right word, but it's how we capture the best practices and the, the, the knowledge and share it and transfer it to each other. There are universities setting up programs in art and science at the moment a little bit everywhere. We're all a little bit homeopathic. We're sort of very small in each one of our environments. And I, I think it would be helpful in the coming years if, if this, maybe knowledge capture is not the right, knowledge capture and transmission and sharing. I mean, the, the te in some places it's teaching, but if you go to the fab labs, it's a very different kind of situation if you go to, to some of the other spaces. Um, the, the, the other level, which um, and I'm looking at Harold because we had a bit, we had a bit of a discussion just there about that the artists that we had this time was sort of mostly in non-narrative um, forms of art making. Um, uh, there was a little bit of discussion of science fiction and so on, but I, I but I think part of you know what I tried to explain in my my presentation is that we we, we need to build a narrative of why. This makes sense in 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 in, uh, in the world around us, um, and and that narrative building that doesn't happen by itself. <laughs> um, and so uh, I think it would be interesting um, of how we explain not only to ourselves but to others what it is that we're doing. I mean, it, it's a, it's a, a, a building of those narratives and. And I, and now Pierre has got me thinking about how you network ethics, uh, because indeed you, you tend to think of ethics as a hierarchical <laughs> organization of, of values. Um, 
Um, and then just the, 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 the other level is just the, the, um, the institutional support that we can provide to each other. Um, um, I know there are young people who are very nervous about going into these interdisciplinary careers because it's already difficult to get a job. <laughs> And if you take a risk at the wrong time of your career, <laughs> and so I, I was delighted. I actually have two CVs, unlike John Mark, who has one CV. So I have a art and science CV and a science CV <laughs> because I would never get promoted, <laughs> uh, have gotten promoted, the director de recherche au CNRS, if I had <laughs> two passports. <laughs> So the, the institutional networking, I think, is important so that we can help build robust uh, institutional structures and it's um, so beyond the sharing of experiences of the, this kind of workshop I think we should also work on building some of these other levels of, uh, of the work to do oh, but it's interesting Roger because uh, I, I mean <laughs> we're wrapping up and, and I, I partially uh, disagree w w with you uh, I, um, you know talking about system that replace another system uh, somehow I think the collapse by themselves or because there is a growing uh, number of people interested by other stuff and at some point they are outnumbering the old power in place. Uh, okay, we can do like the wave and attacking the cliff but um, so this is one thing in terms of strategy uh, that we might think in a different way. Uh, and the second thing is about uh, the way you say, very, you say very clearly, we need to build a narrative uh, to tell every, everybody else uh, why, what we do matters. And um, also, I think, I, I agree, and I, 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 mean, <laughs> I disagree with, with that. And in a way, when I started yesterday morning, I, I said that it was all about metaphors and storytelling. And in a way, I think that in all those conferences, workshops that I've attended dealing with art and science, we have a kind of a, of a mantra uh, convincing ourselves that what we do matters. And that the first audience of narratives that art science collaboration matters is actually not the outside world, but is ourselves. And, and I think. I think this is a bit tricky and that yes probably we have to come up with new metaphors to describe what we are doing and we already have and we are building them while doing and I'm less interested in um, building up the um, and I want to be a little bit provocative here, the, the uh, um, um, prière <laughs> that we will say every morning and every night that art and science collaboration, it's really good for it. And I'm more interested in doing things um, and that the prière and the metaphors in the narrative is going to emerge from what we do. So I think it's uh, our difference, maybe. And Jim disagree we're right here for the rest of the night. <laughs> Jim. I don't think we disagree. <laughs> I just want to say I totally uh, disagree with that. <laughs> I think that's such a, a personal uh, viewpoint, you know. I mean, uh, why you do things. I mean, I do things because I, I love them and I have fun and that's it, you know. And sure, if it, to, to communicate with the public is very important and it's part of my job, but, you know, I, no, I can't agree with Anton, you know, you said them, so <laughs> that's all I have to say, you know. I think, I think in art, in art, or in science, or in art and science, you can have the same discussion. You can say, you know, why I'm a scientist, why I'm an artist, why I'm an art scientist, you know? So I, I don't see why you said it. Maybe you can explain to me, you know? I don't think it's what I said, but... <laughs> <laughs>
Uh, well, just a, a small contribution. Uh, nowadays, we're all hurting for funding everywhere. And the, what I had in mind uh, when I was trying to uh, introduce the topic of the entertainment industry, um, uh, let me just point out something you were probably aware. There's a new expression, uh, crowd funding. There are very interesting movies that have been made uh, with a freedom, creative freedom, freedom from big companies, you can actually explore other ideas. And uh, I think maybe something along those lines, not just for uh, funding movies, but uh, research projects. Uh, and uh, I think, uh, of course, the, there's a down, uh, there's pitfalls, there's activism, and then there's that new word, selectivism, where people just click on the mouse, and they're activists, they just click. So, selectivism. Uh, and there have been interesting phenomena along those lines. So, there, there are pitfalls, no doubt about it, yet, we're all hurting for funding, and I think perhaps that would be worth exploring. Any reaction? I mean, uh, Oddly enough, in French, uh, funding, you say, liquid. <laughs> means cash. <laughs> so it's another kind of fluid, okay? Uh, maybe Nathalie or Jean-Marc or Patrice, you, you are very quiet at the moment. Do you have taken institutional positions? We don't have that many scientists here. Yeah, what, what, what I was thinking of is, um, I try to have the definition of art and the definition of science. Where is the difference? I was thinking to that, and at the end of the day, I, I think we are all scientists or all artists, you know, and this is just a, a sticker that because of the years, because of the time, because of the others, because of the merchandising, some people put stickers on ourselves and they gave us positions or not or, or, or so on. But in fact, we are creatures, you know, we're, 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 we're even the mathematicians, when you solve an equation, if I write down an equation of a board, um, this is art, I don't see the difference, you know, the beauty of an equation, the beauty of solving something is as beautiful as, and, and Leonardo da Vinci, uh, he, he knew that perfectly, and uh, so I am an, if I am an artist or if I am a scientist, w w the difference is not there, in fact, okay, the difference is not there, it is just, because I have a position and because she has no position or and, 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 and things like that. So this is my... This is, this is perfect as a conclusion, I would say. No? <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> I have no power as an, as an MC. But maybe another conclusion is that I want just to uh, maybe uh, take the, the one... To do even better, Jean-Marc. Yes, I would like to do better. <laughs> I will try to take the, uh, the point of view of Anne is that, uh, and this also maybe uh, express why I mean that art and science as a scientist. I think we are, my, my point of view is that we are part of the system. As being part of the system, we uh, need to be interrogated and we need also to know what matters. I think the key question is what matters. And if we take the big map of uh, Roger, uh, we, uh, as a scientist, I may, do, I may do many, many things. I may explore in diff different directions. And the key point is what is useful, what matters. And a way to, to find that, if I do not break the circle, if I do not do this, if I do I not do the entire, entire uh, um, ergodic type of thought, uh, I'm not I will never be sure about what matters, but at least I want to test uh, if what I'm doing matters or not. And in the other uh, direction, uh, as a scientist, I may do some work, but then I have some feelings about that. And I need to share those feelings, because for the, for the decision as a role, as a society, we need to, uh, to, and to have not only the facts, not only the data, from the scientists, but also the feelings. And if the, the scientists are putting, are pretending they are giving data, they are lying. They are giving their feelings, and the feelings has been from the start, from the choice, from the, the, the production of the data. So, uh, and I will take Emmanuel, he's lying. <laughs> but, so, uh, 
Who has a better conclusion? <laughs> Just a, a small, uh, small comment about uh, what you said about the, the educational issue. I think it's very, very important because how many PhD doctors are here, for example, with us discussing about our science today? And um, it's very important that, uh, that the collaboration we have uh, as a scientist uh, now uh, uh, can um, impact also our, our uh, students and not uh, f from an exotic uh, way. I mean, uh, well, this is an artist and I will show it's quite different from us, but we can uh, work with, with uh, her. Or he, uh, so it's a very important time to associate um, uh, to, to this discussion and to this collaboration our students at university and at schools and, uh, and to, to think about it. And, uh, because if, if we want to, to change the mind, uh, we have to, to change uh, very early in the, in, in the educational uh, I know, f um, f formation. F uh, what, what's, it's just a little point about the, what you said.